Hello, welcome to part three of the act one. Is it part three? Yeah, it is. The act one developer commentary. So we're gonna be doing the laserette and um, the help see probably. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be interesting. Hopefully it'll be fun. Um, yeah, I made, this is my game. I'm Ethan, I made the game by myself. Um, and this is Venge, but you already knew that if you're watching this. So we're, <laughs> we're just gonna get started. Enough of my weird intros. Take off my shoes. Here we go, okay. So this is the laserette area. I think I called this the Woodlands. The style is based off of Glitch, the original version of Glitch. A lot of these are very, like uh, this floor right here and these walls are actually just ripped right from Glitch. Um, changed it a little bit to fit Venge better, but that's the majority of that. But I liked the idea of like a forest almost. And that's what I was kind of going for, but it's not too great at the moment. So, okay, so we're, we're just, here's the laserette. And he walks by, and he's actually, he won't care about us right now until he walks past that doorway, and then he will. And I can actually, we can get him mad at us if we just make a lot of noise, and you can see he actually shoots lasers, hence why his name is the Laserette. And he is pretty fast, I'm just gonna fly away. No, he's still summoning. Oh my gosh, I don't want to die. <laughs> just teleport away. Oh dang, I, wow. I'm not very good at this game, if you <laughs> can't tell. So we're gonna try that again. You wish you can escape that easy. Yeah, I did try to escape very easily, but I did not. Well, now you know how the laserette works. Now we've got that covered. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, right. I confused myself. It's literally right here. I was like, oh gosh, the saving broke. It didn't break. It's just right through this doorway. There we go. So the, oh, then we got this cool effect right here where it goes and it closes off and we're like stuck there. Anyway, here's the laser part again, vice versa. He's actually, it's hard to tell, but if I go through this wall here, he's actually sitting behind, where'd he go? Oh my gosh, did I disable him? I think I disabled him. He was originally, you, you used to be able to see him. Where am I? You used to be able to see him as you were like up here but it looked a little weird because he wasn't animated at all but anyway we're gonna trigger him again and we're just gonna you can just do this and run right past him doesn't even care and then as soon as he's gone you do that so the puzzle this puzzle here is mainly just walking around this foggy area and like flicking these power box things pretty not not the greatest gameplay in the world but it, it works it's cute um most of them are just buttons, except for this one, which is a power set, which is over here. Oh! Where is he? We're good. So, during- in this area, I've seen, like, gameplays where people literally will just crouch like this the entire time. <laughs> and, like, um, you don't need to do that. For the most part, you can run and jump and stuff, you just have to know where he is. And I do not know where he is, so I'm kind of being risky here. But... Oh! Where is I hear him? He's like this way. He's gone, okay, we're good. So then we just follow this. It's kinda cute, it's very tense, and people like it, which I'm glad. This isn't my favorite boss fight, and I don't think it's people's favorite boss fights either, but it, it's kinda cute. So, originally, you'll notice it's very dark in here and very big. And originally, um, there was going to be more than, not more than one laserette, but more than one boss in this area. There was going to be the laserette and chairman, I think. I think there may have been something else, but that's all I remember. And, um, chairman would have been in this thing stalking you, like, behind corners and stuff. But I couldn't get it working. And so I just gave up. <laughs> but it's still in the game, it's just disabled. Oh. We're good. So... There's, if you were to able to, if you were to like hack the game or something, you'd probably be able to enable it, but I don't know. Maybe I should do it. Should I, let me know in the comments. Should I, should I put it in an update, like a patch? Like 1.2.3 or something? I don't know. Like, fix it? Should I do it? Would you guys like that? Oh, sorry. Wait, what? Oh, this one's asking for a thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm distracted. Let me plug it in there. Walk around here. Oh, these lights are tripping me out. Okay, so then this is the part where the red source is like, ooh, I hid your gear, and it's like, oh gosh, 
All you have to do is just like run over here and then oh shoot teleport out of there oh my gosh oh my gosh no we are getting out of there <laughs> that scared me <laughs> that legitimately scared me okay let's see if i can get back to where we were it's just dead quiet right now I think we're good. Dang. <laughs> I think for the laser, I, 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 am, I may be wrong. Don't take my word for it. But I think if you're recording like I am now, the game, the game t can tell if you're recording. Like, that's just a fact. I've coded that in. But I think if you're recording, it's a more aggressive. I think. I think. I'm not sure, but I feel like I did that. I don't know, but the game is very aware of what you're doing. Oh, did you hear that door? That's unintentional. It scares people. That's why I left it in. <laughs> but it's not intentional. I think what it is, if we go out of the map here, I think it's that right over there. The cartoonist area, one of the doors is closing. And the trigger just happens to be in here. But, um, yeah. Let's let's put this thing back before the, before the laserette comes back. And let's see... Where is it? It's this way. This area is so dark and so spooky. I'm probably going to make it a lot lighter and a lot smaller for 2.0. Um, yeah, let's see. Plug that in. Then follow the wire. These wires were so hard to make. Like, I literally... I remember it vividly because my grandpa was over. And um, he was, like, sitting behind me as I was out like, making these. And it was taking so long. Because I had no idea how to do this. Like, this effect right here. And how I ended up doing it was... There's a UV map right here. And then it's just kind of like... Oh, gosh. Oh, another thing. I think the laser uses your microphone volume. I think. Again, another thing that... Don't take my word on it. But I think. I think that's what it... Because I know Venge does do that. I think. I should know my own game, but I don't. Oh, gosh. He's coming. There he is. Hi, laserette. Oh, up it goes. But, um, so my grandpa was over and I was making these. And, I, and so, anyway, UVs, that's pretty much how it is. And then it's just animating it. Anyway, let's follow the laserette up here. Oh, nope, never mind. And shoot. You didn't hear anything. No, you didn't hear anything. There's no nothing here. There you go. Bye bye. Remember, he can't see you at all, so if you're crouched to the floor, you're you're safe. You can't, uh, you know, it's very it's very easy to get out of his way, which that was kind of intentional. I didn't want the boss fight to be super challenging. I just wanted it to feel like we're sneaking around. Anyway, so then we escape this area, and we get the magical door effect, like I've been using throughout the game, and it appears, and then boom. I don't know if you noticed, but this hallway changed. It used to be completely different, and now we're walking through here. So we walk around here, and then we get to here. So I'm not going to trigger the cutscene just yet, but actually I'm going to fly around. So this whole area right here, um, what's it called? I remember making this. I, I've, I made this whole cutscene right here on a live stream, actually, and it was pretty fun. This whole area has a lot of significance. Not like lore-wise, but you'll see in Act 2. That's all I'm going to say, but... This area is important. Anyway, anyway, I'm getting distracted. So then we have this table dangling thing, which actually came from Glitch 2.0. And that's where this model came from. And we've got like chairs, we've got the voltage pump in there, all sorts of stuff. And then it just is hidden up into this, this holder up there. And then we got the bridge. And if you're wondering where this exit leads, it will lead somewhere. But currently in game right now, it just it's just an empty hole right there because I'm not gonna make a fall and exit if you can't even see it. And you, I feel like you can't. You can walk across here too. Actually, that's kind of cool. And then if we we can fall down here, I don't know if this collision's down here. There is. And this whole area down here is massive. We got rocks that don't actually have collisions. And then we actually have the blood that the laser right uses. Because usually you can't see down here because of the bridge blockers up there. But this is where the laser right falls and then dies or dies depending on which ending you choose um and then actually the help see area is right intersected with here you'll see so let's just go over here and trigger the cutscene 
and then we'll let this play out. So I animated this in Blender. I copied over the map and stuff and animated it. Here we go. And so it's like, ooh, there's the exit. Super cool. And then <gasps> my timing is not it. <laughs> so we hear the sound and I feel like, hold on. Let me exit the cutscene. I, I know how to do it. Hold on. I figured it out. Okay, so if we press and hold X, we get to leave the cutscene. So we can watch things happen from an outsider perspective. So you can see he runs up, but then he gets teleported back because the, he ran too fast. And then he turns around the corner. It's kind of cool. And then you can see him like slowly walking up. And then there he goes. And then I think he just teleports actually. Oh no, he doesn't. And then there he is. And so if I hold, yeah, it'll teleport me right back to the cutscene. So let's go. Let's go check him out when he. Oh, when he's dead on the floor. Oh. It keeps doing this, and I think I figured out why, but I can't- I don't have the motivation to fix it. So we, here he is. He looks kind of funny when he's dead on the floor. <laughs> his little legs like that. I think he's clipping through the floor, actually. Let me check. Yeah, there he is. He's, like, shoved it up against the floor. Kind of cute. So if we fly back up here, I want to be careful not to press that. Oh. So then we have the first option. Oh, kill. So this pink lever right here, you saw one with the cartoonist. This will choose to kill the kill the monster or not. And then if you kill them, their soul gets released. That is a massive mechanic in the game that is currently not very utilized. And I'm doing that on purpose because I don't want to explain fully what it means for the lore of the game. Other than if I, all, all I want the player to know is if you press this, thing dies. If you don't press it, thing does not die. That's all you need to know. And then I'm going to expand... Act Zero is going to expand on it, upon it a lot more. And because we're... Should we should we explode him? Hmm. The choices. Let's do it. Why not? Let's, and then we'll watch it explode. So then it gets lifted up. And it just... It actually doesn't even hit him. And that's with the explosion. The explosion is all up there. It's all completely fake. But it doesn't actually even hit him. He just... Oh, it does, actually. I lied. It just kind of, like, squishes inside of him. And then his soul gets released, which, where is his soul? There it is. Again, another thing that doesn't actually come from him. And then the soul, if you're wondering, the souls just fade, and then they fade out, and then they die. And if you noticed, as soon as we flip that lever, the help seat area has been loaded. You can kind of see its textures down there with the glowingness of it. The help seat area has been loaded, and it's all ready to go. So then it's like, you monster, or hello murderer, and then we go here, and then we're gonna get the magic tunnel. And you can see the exact moment, here, let's, this actually gonna be kinda cool, I think. You can see the exact moment the scene changes, and then the help seat area is loaded in. And the help seat area takes place in the exact same map space as the lazarette does. And so it's kind of, it was, it was a pain to get that to work. And it was so unnecessary too, but it's a kind of a cool thing. So we walk down this magical colon, or whatever this is, it's kinda pretty don't know really know why I did it but why not you know and then we get to the we get to the help seat area and then it's like ooh spooky and I think this yeah the, it's everything is unloaded as soon as you walk through here so we're in the break room for the help seat this art style was inspired inspired by a very specific thing that I don't think anyone's gonna get I was watching Frozen 2 like the, the second the sequel and I was like watching her castle Elsa's castle and I was watching how it like glowed like the way that like the glass or not glass the ice glowed and i loved that effect so if i turn off my flashlight here let me hold that nothing you can see the way that like props and stuff they'll randomly glow so like these walls are yellow and blue and then the props here are red and stuff and um the ch they change based on what's happening in the scene itself and that's where i was inspired by so then for the art style here of all the paperness I wanted it to look like a kid drew it. And that's because of lore reasons from the Helpsy. The Helpsy came from, um, should I say it? Yeah, why not? The Helpsy came from a daycare. And so since the, oh, almost said something really, I, something I should not have said lore wise. I accidentally almost revealed a character. Um, some, the world, the, 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 the flipped world, Ev everything that gets transformed into the flip world as we've seen gets twisted in a really creepy way or weird way, right? So we saw like, um, what's a good example? Gravity. Gravity gets all weird and it doesn't make sense and things are just flying around everywhere and like, 
there's like windows here that don't look out to anything. You know, it, it's all weird, right? And so the flipped world took the daycare and took all of these kids' drawings and made it reality. So that's, and then that's where the help seat comes from. So we're about to meet the help seat and it's gonna be very difficult to like talk while the help seat is talking, but um, we'll figure it out. So it's like, so it's like, ah, uh, here, let me turn on subtitles. That'll make it a little bit easier. So then it's like, take it with you. And you can see the walls are all purple and yellow and stuff. There? And there's the help seat in the sink. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so you can complete this help seat area without the help seat at all. The game will let you do that. The only problem is you need the code from the help seat. Um, and the code is just randomly generated, so it's not too bad. But, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna be grabbing oh gosh, thank you. the help seat. It's like, the help seat was the biggest pain in the butt to code. I kid you not, it took me literally months and it's still really buggy and stuff. It was a mess. I, I hate the help seat because of that. Like, it's a mess. So basically, as you can see, I'm just gonna mute the help seat. We're just gonna turn it down. There we go. Okay. I know how to get through the map, obviously, because I made it, but, um, yeah, it was a mess. I'm going to be working so hard to make it work perfectly. So we're walking through, kind of nice. You can see our flashlight has turned to this aqua color. And then the music and then the walls are all, the walls have changed from yellow and blue to like yellow and black. Or no, the still blue, never mind, I lied. But it's like, it, I like this color scheme. It's very strange. So then we're walking through, if we if we try to run with the help see it freaks out, which is just because I did that, not for any lore reasons, but because um, if you ran, the help seat couldn't give you directions fast enough, and it was way too weird. So I just made it so you couldn't run, and that's that. So if you run, the help seat will explode, and I can show you guys that if you want. Although, actually, no, I'm not going to. You should experience it in-game. So just do these curtains. We've got this very bright light here, and we're going to find out. Actually, remember that sticky note from the last episode? It's gone, look at that. I wonder why I took it off. Huh. Then we got the lava and you can obviously drop the help seat in the lava right there and it kind of panics a little bit, but um, you don't want to do that because you need the code from the help seat. So notice how the walls have changed when you drop, tried to, when you threatened to drop the help seat. Now it's like the walls are now pink and red and all cool and stuff. So then we're just gonna walk around here and the help seat is going to give us the code so then we can see one of, this is a great example right here, um, of the red source and the sticky notes interacting and like fighting. And so let's type in, oh. So the, the help seat will give you the wrong code um, at first. As you can see, zero. It, it's not, it, this is technically a bug, but I actually really liked how it works because it, the help seat is literally lying to you. Oh my gosh. It's, come on, help see. It's 073. There we go. Okay. So then it's like, let's go. So the help, the red source and the sticky notes do not like each other. And they're very, like, they're very, they beef a lot. And it's kind of cool. And this is like a great moment right here. So the help see is saying go right. And then the sticky notes are saying go left. And if you go left, then you just like drop the help see, right? And then it, you just go into the vents. I'm going to be going this way with the help seat, which is the way that the help seat wants you to go. And like, we can actually go through here, this wall here. It's nothing, oh gosh, nothing too special if I can get through it. What in the world? Can I, I can actually drop the help seat through the glass and soft lock the game actually. But I don't want to do that. Let me just teleport through the glass here. Actually, no, I don't want you. And we got this kind of cute area with very stretched textures and you can see, kind of cute, nothing too much going on. Anyway, let's grab the help seat here. And so if we follow its directions, it takes us this way and notice the walls, they're all red now, completely red and black. And so it's kind of signifying like the help see is evil. It's very subtle, but it's very, but it's like there. And it's kind of cool. So you're walking through and you got this beautiful purple and red and you're taking through and then it's like, oh, dead end. And the help is like, keep going. So you keep going. And... Then we get to this room. I love this room so much. We got the lava on the ceiling and the floor. 
and we're gonna let the helpsy talk speak for itself. I want you to drop me here. And you run over that bridge to get those strawberries, okay? And then you get them, and then you bring them back to me. Sound cool? Great, that sounds like a good plan. So our, his plan is to run over the bridge. We run over the bridge, we grab the strawberries, and then we bring them back. What could go wrong? So um, if I, we can fly around this area. It's kind of cute. There's nothing too crazy going on. We got some lava, a lava shader that I wrote. We've got this, you can see the ceiling right there. Like if I can make it so you can, so the fire is gone. You can see the ceiling right there. It's all ready. And um, then you got the bridge and stuff, bridge and stuff. So let's run over to the bridge and get those strawberries. Oh, it was all a lie. This scene is so cool. And then he kind of dives into the lava and then he'll actually appear back here eventually and then the ceiling starts to go down and notice how all the lights are synced to the music i love that there he is and he's watching us it's so cool i love this scene so if you even if you got out i think you'd still die oh if I... yeah you can see i'm getting hurt so no matter what you die there's no escaping out of that so i i made that scene because I really wanted like a really cool like transformation and I thought the helpsy was kind of funny because like it was like you know it's a tiny little innocent creature not you know whatever um and so I added that originally that was planned from day one but I didn't plan the transformation originally what the helpsy was going to do I'm just going to ignore it and then fly over the gate originally what the helpsy was going to do was it was going to lead you into like a lead you into like a room like this and then the ceiling would have just crushed you but i felt like you know that's cute but it's not anything crazy so we're gonna run over there or teleport i should say let's just fly out of the map you can see the help seat area is loaded those are the triangles that determine that sync the music so every boss fight has a few of these triangles i think these this one has six and then most but most don't most only have like two or three so if we go to the vent here we can get in the vent boom and then i don't think we can leave oh we can leave actually but yeah so we can walk through the vent and that is the helpsy area you can actually so see how this vent is reflective right there and then if i see how there's like a very soft line right there <laughs> you can actually see the material i'm using to contain the player because the player is actually standing up in the vent there's no crouching going on um there's a fake floor right underneath here and it used to be able to crouch, and if you could crouch, you'd fall right through the floor. But anyway, so then we got this cool transformation scene, and how I did that is way down there. You can see, we'll fly over there. Speed up the game so I can get there faster. You got the vent. So this is the vent that you walk through, and then this part of the vent is just lit very brightly. And then the vent just goes whoosh, and just covers you up. And that's pretty much how I just did that effect. It's kind of cute. Right here. And then we teleport to this other vent that's way out of the way. And now we are in the real world again. And we are about to meet FX. But I'm probably going to leave the video here. Because I want FX to probably have his own video. Because there's a lot of stuff I can show you with that. And a lot of history. Those vents have been through so much. So we will leave off right here. So if you liked this rendition... Um, make sure to like do all the things leave it a like do all the stuff you know um patreon's right gotta think my patreons um where's my chrome here it is so we here we are the patreons are amazing they're great let's see where how do i access them again it's been a while oh i clicked the wrong one so here are my patreons we have sam martello professional chairman simp also <laughs> Also, debug item cult collector. I'm Snickerdoodle, the Blockimations, Cold Danlin, IA23K, 
Hello, I'm Under the Water, Type Vader's Layer, and Minimations. Thank you all so much for your support. You guys are the best. If you want to join the Patreon, you should do that. There's a link in the description. Um, d Patreons are going to be giving, getting four exclusive demos to Act 1, 0, and Act 2. They get to choose whenever they want them. So the first Patreon demo is coming out pretty soon. And yeah, it's going to be quite fun. So you should definitely check it out if you want to. No pressure. Yeah. Oh, you also get all the rest of the acts for free as long as you're a Patreon. So there's another perk. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. You guys are the best. Bye. <laughs>